Welcome to the 145th episode of Science of the Southland. Jack is here, Jake is here, Akshay is not, he's still at work, but we're doing an emergency midweek podcast on the hire of Brent Key, which uh, I guess, Jake, we, we we decently saw as a possibility, as a reasonable possibility. Um, I think we all had our favorites based on, if anyone read our coaching profiles, you knew who we want, who from the Rebel seat as a whole <laughs> was probably rooting for, uh, but that is in no way to discount Mr. Key and everything he's done uh, throughout the last few, throughout the last eight games. So I, mean, I guess first impressions, what do you got? Yeah, I, uh, I will say this is certainly an emergency podcast. I do it from uh, my parked car in a parking deck somewhere in Midtown. So oh, this yes. is definitely not the usual setup. But... Yeah, I'm at, I'm at Wild Heaven West End. Um, if you hear smooth jazz in the background, that's why. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. It's because it's a high class establishment. What can I say? Mm-hmm. Anyways, yes. um, in terms of, the, the quick reactions, um, I mean, I, I think before the UNC game, uh, the opinion was pretty spread uh, among tech fans, among myself, among various, you know, high profile, you know, hot options, things like that. Um, I think for a lot of people that coalesced around key after a second road ranked win, which to be fair to them, you know, those have been hard to come by over, uh, over the past few years. I will say myself. Um, I was going to be in the place where I would be okay with whoever they hired, as long as they said, you know, here's, here's our guy. Here's why we wanted him. Here's what, uh, what he's going to do to lead us into the future. And, and I told myself that was going to be okay. Cause at the end of the day, a lot of this is out of our hands. Um, and I really don't think there's any point in having a retroactive favorite anymore. Cause Brent Key's our guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I can't say I know him personally or anything like that i have interacted with him once that's a a good story for another time but uh in terms of what he's done on the field i think if you would have told us at the beginning of the year that georgia tech was going to go four and four in the acc um people would have been pretty happy by that mark Uh, i I believe that makes key also four and four and three because clemson was was under under the previous right head man so yeah but i i'm at peace and i'm excited looking forward I think that's the right stance to take. I mean, we, the drama's over. The drama's done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Like we're we're out of that. We've got our guy, and that was what I was most excited for. <laughs> the drama. He wanted more drama. He wanted no, another week for of drama. No, for it to be over. For it oh, to be okay. over. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So we're out of it. We we have the guy. We just get to we get to now root for this guy. We don't have to worry about. It. There's no strings attached anymore. There's no oh, but what about this or what the expectations were. We just know we have a guy that's going to care about this team and that wants to win, and that the guys clearly responded to, um, just between the pit game, um, and then there's a video on all the socials that Tech posted when Jay Bat, uh, introdu- re- I guess, reintroduced Brent Key as their head coach, if you want to put it that way. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's at least that. I think that that's a good thing. I, mean, if, I think everybody saw last year when Notre Dame's head coach, I'm forgetting his name, but when he got introduced. Marcus everyone, Freeman. Marcus Freeman. Marcus Freeman. They went off. First thing that came to my head, too. First yeah. thing. Yeah, and now granted Notre Dame's performance, they got better, um, but maybe not what we expected from a Notre Dame team. But either way, still, a kind of response like that is, I think, what you want from your team because if liking your coach is important in general. <laughs> I uh, I would agree there. I think it's um, it, it's not something like obviously the search is the search, and and it's now over. And this is not a place where you can relitigate what happened. What happened is. Brent Key is our guy, and uh, and I think today's developments, as they uh, fully flesh out, as we see not just like things like contract details, but also what the staff is going to look like moving forward. I think that'll help us really uh, flavor and prepare for next year. You know, some of the the transfer portal type uh, type changes as well. But really, it, it, it it's not one continuous era because there are things an in interim can't do or doesn't have the power to control right he, he he didn't pick his own staff when he was the interim he didn't uh you know have as as much say over the way things are are structured and things like that to to the extent that he will as a head coach and right. you know it's not fully turning over a new leaf um and, and you have some benefits there obviously with continuity but you know moving forward we still don't know what the full picture looks like and it'll be interesting and exciting to see how it kind of fleshes out and you know, getting a full year of Brent Key style spring practices, summer practices, yeah. weight regimes, all, all, all those things as well. Yeah, uh, not to steal from the bit we have coming later, but I mean, 
I think we'll all, we're all in agreement, and everyone that's seen this program, that they're going to be better with the little things and the details um, than they were before, and just hammering down the fundamentals. On your point of, like, this is going to be a different staff, um, Kelly Quinlan uh, did tweet out that Chip Long, the offensive coordinator, wide receiver coach, Dale Alexander, are both out. Um, he's expecting Chris Weinke to be retained as the only holdover from the offensive staff. Um, that can change as well, of course. Um, so that's where we are there in terms of that. Um, so there will uh, there will be some turnover. Um, there will uh, what this team will look like. Maybe we'll have to see. This happened a day ago, so well, everything to be discovered is to come, uh, which is good. But uh, I guess any thoughts on the 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 offensive changes right now? I mean, I think it, Chip Long was it felt like a step up ish. I think uh, when we came into the season, but I think there is still a lot to be uh, desired at the end. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised looking at some of the advanced metrics that our defensive ratings are as low as they are. Cause my impression as just a, a, a fan and, you know, somebody who maybe it's a little bit easier to track in your head when a turnover happens or something like that, but tech was top 10 uh, in, in turnovers for us. So the defensive staff um, at least seemed like they were doing pretty well. Um, we can, you know, hash out some of those, uh, you know, full team stats once the, the rest of the year is completed there for, you know, relative to the other schools, but in terms of the offense, I don't think anybody, uh, particularly, particularly if you watched that abysmal 16 to nine UVA game, uh, would <laughs> yeah. say that our offense was anywhere near respectable. It was pretty no. subpar for a lot of it. Um, yeah. at, and I cite the UVA game in particular because six of those points came on a what an interception run back, yep. uh, for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Um, and, is it a little unfair of me to, to seize on one game? Maybe, but also, you know, it it, it didn't exactly inspire a lot of confidence uh, that we were going to score uh, in in the same vein that, you know, maybe we've seen from from past tech teams. You know, yeah. obviously that's point. a little bit older now. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's still a plot point. It happened. Like you have to, like it has to be acknowledged. Um, I think the, and, there, I think there was no uh, plot point that was, too far out to be excluded this year um well and the wild thing about it too is you can't even say that this is like chip long minus jameer gibbs because they didn't overlap right and, no, and one man does not an, no. one man doesn't an offense make yeah maybe maybe it looks different with gibbs well certainly it, lo it oh, probably yeah. looks different with oh, gibbs. Yeah. but like but even with like a jordan yates veteran proven leader um yeah. with some experience in in you know in, in a room that was relatively green uh ty pumachan Zach Gibson, some experience there. Pyron, uh, a freshman, and then Sims. Mm -hmm. Sims, what? He played 12 total games over the last two years, I think. Yeah, not as many as so, you probably want. Yeah, that's a season, a season and two. So he went, he went zero and zero against UGA, which is just a mind-boggling <laughs> stat. My goodness, his face, just by the way, is uh, painted in a mural across from Colk. So he's been immortalized on campus as long as the mural is up. Uh, it's not described that it's him, but you can you can tell that it's Jeff Sims's face in terms of uh, fun details on campus that you can find. Um, yeah, I yeah, offensively, yeah, it was a struggle, um, and I don't think we really came into form until the end. Once I mean the Pyron game, I think is where it was like, oh, we have a thing here that we can like work on. Uh, Sims didn't end up playing that much under Key because he because his foot got hurt, um, and so we never got to see what his post Key development really would have looked like. Um, Pyron yep. had a couple of great games, and then he got hurt. So it was like, all right, well, that's the end of that. And so then we're working on the the uh, Tyson and then Gibson situation. And Gibson looked <laughs> to say bad is an understatement in his first game, running out of bounds with the time ex with time expiring. Um, but they both kind of figured it out. We figured out how to run two quarterbacks. We figured out how to uh, look competent doing that. Um, which I think to a Tech fan sounds glorious to say the word competent and offense in the same sentence right now. Uh, and there was, I mean, it, and then we did not, and we brought this up in the last episode, but we did not look bad in the first half against Georgia. We had an 11-play drive that resulted in a very coherent touchdown, and it looked good. And once Tyson came in, it was like, okay, they should know we're running it, and still they couldn't, Georgia, even Georgia, the almighty Georgia, couldn't tell that Tyson was coming in for a run play and just had a walk-in six. Um, so, yeah, I think, if anything, We'll have consistency next year. Fingers crossed with injuries. Yeah, I I don't think you can. 
I don't think you can bank too much just on injury luck alone, but in terms of maybe, you know, um, getting some, some depth through the portal or just development, yeah. right. It, yeah. it is, it is brutal for Zach Byron that, uh, that he broke his collarbone. Like he, he's it a really promising is. young dude and seeing him ball out in Blacksburg is certainly the most, uh, Eh, maybe the UNC game or that Louisville game where Sims or not Sims Gibbs vaulted a dude on the goal line. Those are pretty good <laughs> memories, yeah, but, yeah. but in terms of individual performances like that, that was pretty exemplary. But as we saw this year, you can't do it alone. Right. Especially no. at that critical position. And even just like from the fact that maybe a mentor or somebody who's, you know, been at another school and seen some, seen some stuff uh, might, might be a good call, but again, all this is still uh, an unlo- an unknown as as we see these things flesh out. Yeah, not to go backwards again, but I think it's important to note this: if Josh Downs does not catch that touchdown pass with time expi- with time almost expiring against us for UNC, we don't have we have four wins. That season, the season ends with four wins. Do yep. do you think Brent Key is the head coach with that loss? Because I feel like that's the sliding doors moment of this of the next three weeks. It was where we're at now. I, I think that that is so interesting to know because I, I personally don't uh, think that the the clamor gets nearly as loud because coming off of off of that Miami game like that, that was about as just wiped the slate as, as I've seen everyone. But tech fans, and I, I say that as a tech fan, we are some of the most fickle, uh, like just <laughs> roller coaster of emotions type people. Yeah. And I think the wild the wild thing, right? There, there's so many moments in, or so many big ar- arching themes in college football that it's hard to sometimes go back to a singular moment or play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people cite very famously the Elijah Moore uh, Egg Bowl play um, as like, wow, and then the whole world broke or whatever. But like, Brent Key's ceiling is unknown. To some yeah. extent, his floor is also unknown. Yeah. And to, to keep it in tech related examples, that ceiling could darn well be George O'Leary. We just don't know, which again, not a bad place to be and and not a, not a bad comparison to make, but you know, again, who knows, who knows what that floor is. But if we get to the point where, where Brent key is a seen as a George O'Leary figure, it is going to come down. I am certain because as heck I write history columns, I will make it. So that's how it's remembered as (laughs) that Josh Downs play being the through the looking glass moment, you know? Yeah. We only could, we could, we could only still mention George O'Leary because we just have the variance of where this could go is still everything. We haven't seen a Brent key floor with the Brent key pieces put in place. This was a Brent key floor with some Collins pieces still left over kind of situation. Uh, yeah. So a lot to still, it's, it's next year. It will be another year of discovery once again for yep. Georgia tech football. Um, and go on from there. So um, I'll give you the last word. You got anything else you want to mention before we move on to our next bit? Yeah, I, I think an important thing to mention is that, uh, you know, it is still going to be Brent Key's first ever uh, head coaching position. He was yeah. OC one year uh, under O'Leary uh, down at UCF. Uh, funny enough. Uh, actually, that's not funny. He played for O'Leary. Duh. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it's still going to be, probably a learning experience. Uh, mm-hmm. I think something that's going to be important, not just t- to be less reactive or roller coaster ridey is just to be, you know, present and positive, you know, like uh, this is all inelegant way to put this, but like, just be there, you know, like yeah. this is, this is a new leaf. Even if, you know, some of the faces may stay consistent from the old staff, you know, it sounds like defense might be uh, at least a little bit um, uh, of the same, the same faces it's a new leaf right this is a new year and and georgia tech you know whether it's our presence in atlanta in a broad sense or our attendance at games in an acute sense like it, it just needs to be there to support the team and, and be a part of you know the future of the program the future of the institute future of the acc we don't know what this football landscape is going to look like moving forward so yep. just uh you know buying in it from us is not as important as the players but you know we still need to be there and, and do our part as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, gonna be gonna be interesting. We'll see how this goes. Uh, spring game is in a few months, uh, and then uh, just just 
don't know if y'all, if for those that listen, I don't know if y'all know this, but re- attendance has been uh, understandably low the last couple of years. So uh, coming back and get, going to games will be important, I think, as well, because it, the players do feedback off the crowd and who's there and how empty the stadium is. Um, and while we may not have an Alabama-sized stadium, we can fill at 55,000. I've seen it happen. So yep. let's get it done. Um with and I don't that, want to hear anyone trashing any students for it either, because they've turned out very strongly for they some. They showed up this year. Four There's, very long years. They showed four up this year. Years. Three of my yeah. years with Collins, and it felt pretty bad at the end. Not gonna lie. Uh, so glad we're uh, gl- hey, we're turning the page now. We're finally turning the page fully. We're gonna be in a new place. Coming yep. up next, actually no, let's do uh, let's hear from section one thirty before we before we get out of here. Yeah, section one hundred three. It's the best place to buy Georgia Tech apparel. They have everything. ATL logo, of course, but also the tech word mark, uh, and including tech gold, which is astonishingly astonishingly hard to find sometimes. Um, one other great thing, the new Ramblin' Wreck uh, script shirt does come in long sleeve. One of uh, the most cited things I hear just out uh, from your average tech folk uh, is that, you know, if there's a white out and it's chilly, so hard to find white apparel and long sleeves. So <laughs> love that we're really covering all the bases, not just gold or, or the word mark. But you can get that from Section 103 as well. There's Section103.com, at Section103 on Twitter. And uh, as always, free shipping on orders or over 70 bucks. Go ahead and check them out. Totally support them. Good Christmas presents. Parents, if you're listening, Christmas, please. Anyways, coming up next, we have the former four-year starter from Georgia Tech, Reggie Paul, four-year quarterback. Uh, he wanted to come on and you know give us some thoughts about where he where he's at with this hiring, and so we're like, yeah, you should do that. So after I, I don't know what Akshay put in a sound bite. I don't know what you're gonna do, but do something to trans to uh, get us into this interview with Reggie Ball. Welcome to the second half of I guess this is episode 145 of Science of the Southland. I don't know if y'all saw on Twitter, but uh, tech legend Reggie Ball is like, can I get on a podcast? And we're like, you can come on ours. If you want to come on ours, and so we're doing it. So we have tech, former tech quarterback Reggie Ball here with us. Reggie, thanks for coming on. No problem, man. Hey, just just keeping the momentum going from the from the the hire that we just got with Coach Key, man. Coach Brent Key, shout out yeah. to him and his family. Congrats, man. But I just wanted to get back as much as I can to the program. And like I said before, even in our messages, man, I want to make sure that our, our players are feeling the support that they yeah. that they need right now, man. Because you know they they. They've done a lot, and they've shown a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, For sure. Let's start with this. Since you did play, what – and you, I imagine you'll know better than anyone, especially more than me or Jake, who have not played anything remotely as talented as y'all have. Uh, when there's a change like this, of this degree and this much drama, and just all, all the stuff that was going on, what is that like as a player in the locker room? Like, it's just I imagine that is not the best experience to go through. No. Um, it's tough. Um, and if you go way back when – I came in uh, uh, in 2003. That was a year to where we lost 11 players. Um, and I think most of those players were, were starters. Um, Tony Hollins, for instance, at one point was up for the Heisman. Um, and I think we had, a, I think, was it Greg Gathers? Was one of those guys that actually, uh, um, he might have been before me, but there were some key players that actually got ruled ineligible um, before the season. You know, coming off of that and coming off of tail end of that, that was hard enough dealing with just a lack of, uh, uh, you know, leadership and some of that talent that we lost. But going through that during the season, man, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine it. And, um, and given how big the transfer the transfer portal is and how these kids have way more, way more power than, than you know, athletes and players like I did. So um, I couldn't imagine going through that, you know, four or five games into a season. Uh, um, they just showed a lot of character, you know, responding the way they did. Yeah, and I got to imagine that's pretty uh pretty tough for, you know, freshman quarterback to start on the road at at BYU, you know, down down a lot of down a lot of folks. So you'd be the guy to to know what that's like to adapt, right? Oh yeah. I mean, um I mean, that's the position. You know what I'm saying? Uh the position of the quarterback is to be, you know, the extension of the coaching staff and have have that leadership quality to adjust on a run and be able to deal with, you know, crazy circumstances and, you know, the adverse situations that, that are going to be present. You know what I mean? Um, no quarterback or nobody on the team would, would imagine losing their head coach, you know, four to five games into a season and having to bounce back and, you know, pivot off of that. But, 
you know, um, again, shout out to those guys in that team and the program for doing what they did. What did you see this year? I guess so let's, let's start with game one, and then obviously those first three first few games were not the greatest in tech history. Um, but I guess in terms of adjustments that you saw pre key, post key, or within and within key as well, um, offensively, what 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 were the things that caught your eye the most? Uh, first and foremost, and I know this is maybe unpopular. I love and I, I respect and I appreciate Jeff Collins to the fullest. He rolled out the red carpet for me for anything that I needed. I don't ask for much. You know what I'm saying? I just ask him to practice for the most part. But he treated me. He gave me the royal treatment no matter what went on. So let me get that out the way. This is no bashing Jeff Collins. But pre-key um, dysfunction. Dysfunction. And, and that's obvious, even if you just look at the box scores. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've never seen a special teams unit look as bad as it did in the first five games of the season. And that's just off the punting schemes alone. You know what I mean? But, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not an analyst or anything like that. I'm just telling you what I've seen. Yeah. Um, offensively, there was no rhythm whatsoever. whatsoever. It was almost like these guys just got together and they just started playing with each other. Um, there was no consistency whatsoever. I mean, that was clear. And um, that mid, uh, what, what was the second game? Western Carolina game. Yep. Yep. We struggled. <laughs> you know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. We struggled. And, you know, not to discredit or disrespect any program like West Car- Western Carolina or Western Carolina themselves, um, we're supposed to win those games convincingly. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yep. That didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So once you start to see certain things in certain games and certain situations, especially off of, uh, you know, what was pretty uh, uh, an impressive first half against Clemson, it's just everything went down, downhill after that first half against Clemson. And, um, you know, um, it was just obvious a, a change needed to happen. Yeah, and I, it's interesting that, that you know, that first half against Clemson, because I remember walking out of, uh, honestly, a similar feeling, thinking we had t- turned a corner, made some sort of improvement in the UNC game the year before, and it just seemed like that never really materialized before the ch- change inevitably was made this year. Again, it's, 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 you, you can do it one week, but you got to do it the next week. <laughs> and then after the next week, you got to do it again. And then after that, you got to do it again. Yeah. That's what breaks the programs, the teams, the coaches, the, the players and everything, that consistency. So, um we simply did not have any of that. You know what I'm saying? Pre- um, so, I mean, it was unfortunate. My man had to take the, the, the X or the act, but I mean, it was obvious something had to happen. Yeah. And then once we get to, let's talk about the pit game in particular, because I think we all thought, okay, we're finally out of that situation. We're going to, there's something of a fresh start, but we always still, a lot of the people are still there we don't know what this team was going to look like without that or how they would respond even. Um, And then they got things done. They got enough done in pit. So I mean, on that day in particular, what, what were you feeling in terms of like, okay, there might be some light at this, in this tunnel at some point. It was, it was, it was more revealing than anything. Uh, It showed that not only was it obvious to outside spectators and, and, and fans and alumni, whatever, that something needed to change, the players reflected that. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard to ignore that. It's hard not to see that the response, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From the man to the way the players walk to the 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 level of play. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just that um <clears throat> let's say they were relieved. They yeah. were they were more at ease. They were they they just play harder. You know what they I'm saying? They felt freer to play the game that they knew how to play. They looked a lot more comfortable in the uniform mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, what it, what was going on beforehand. Right. Again, you can't pin that on one in particular thing, player, coach, or anybody. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That change just needed to happen. Some change needed to happen. And, you know, um, shit, we know as quarterbacks, just as head coaches know, it starts at the top. So, yeah. you know. Things need to just simply be addressed, but the player shows. Yep. So, so uh, as a quarterback, you've, you've talked about leadership just a little bit. Is there something now that we're looking 
a little bit towards the future, or I guess the present being in talking about the Brent Key, I guess, ongoing era because it's already started. Um, is there a, like a, a leadership quality or something like that that resonates uh, about Coach Key with you or, or maybe that you've seen from him in the past? Uh, well, I know him for being a winner. Uh, I, I, I know him and I heard about his recruiting um, even when he was with Saban in Alabama. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, that resume alone was impressive. You know what I mean? The way he treated me, just like a, a normal alumni, a normal tech guy, you know, would treat all respect, straight up or down. You know what I mean? Anything I needed, you know, the, that whole coaching staff was, was, you know, just like any other coaching staff, they were very welcoming. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Brent Key, he, there were rumors like behind the scenes for a long time, just how good he was. You know what I mean? And especially, you know, what he did with, uh, you know, Alabama. You know what I mean? So <laughs> the the reputation preceded him. You know what I'm saying? So it was just utmost just respect when I saw him. And I just when you look at when you look at his post game remarks, when you look at his pre game interviews, that's what college kids want, man. You know what I'm saying? So aside from the reputation, aside from his resume, you know, when kids visually see that, they're gonna respond. Yeah, that makes sense. I I played for my dad most of my life in my various sports, and so the motivation was always there in some form or facet. So, but I totally understand the idea of like, yeah, you have to have someone that's believing in you at the same time. Just look at the that performance out. Think of any if you think of the top five coaches in college football right now, in some form or fashion, they're showing you emotion. Yep. From saving yep. to Sweeney to to all the way down to to Kelly down in LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Give me two more. Um, but again, it's there. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you see it even up in the Big Ten. Somebody like Brett Bilema, uh, Bilema going to the map oh. for their yeah. guys with all they've been through this year. That's that's something that's resonated with me. And my only connection to Illinois is I did a marching band show there in high school twice. You know, like that's, <laughs> it, it, that's it's okay. something that translates to a random casual fan. You know, fighting the line. Now. I got you. I got you. I do. Yeah. So- at, with our blog, we we try our best to be as objective as we can, but at the same time, we're still diehard tech fans. We either graduated there or have been fans there in other in other ways, and I think for us, we 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 weren't we weren't going to be mad if Key was the higher because we knew we 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 saw that like okay, the team bought into him, and that's square one of something you have to to get done as we've established. Um, I don't so. think we were fully. I would say thrilled just because we do we do there's a lot of good options out there that maybe would have wanted to jump to power five or something like that. Um, for in your unique situa- position of ex player fan alumni, does what what informs you when you when you are watching situations like this unfold where you where you see so there's going to be a change or something like that? What what's your priority in your stance when you see this heck go on? Um, you mean from like from here now moving forward? Yeah. Priority number one, I think, is just recruiting talent, man. Mm-hmm. I don't. We yeah. don't give. We don't give the talent on the field enough credit. Yeah. And for example, our defensive unit right now, our defensive unit. That secondary it, is good. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. And, but that's that's the players doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Talk about how bad the coaching was here, how bad the schemes were there, how inconsistent everything else was. But that that group of that group that defensive group. Those players are on the field making plays week in and week out. Yeah, and this has been going on for damn near, well. No, no, I mean, not say two years straight because last year it was a little crazy. Yeah, but this entire yeah. year, this entire year they've been handling their business. You they know have, what I mean? They have. So talent, talent is number one. I I, I get the coaches are important. I get that. I get that part. They are playing. That. They are playing. No, yeah, they're not playing. And we need talent. We need talent. That's priority number one. After that, man. You know we need a quarterback. You know we need a guy that can step in there, give us two and a half, three years. Um, it's very rare that you get a guy that starts four years straight. You know what I mean? So that's asking a lot from any kid, any program. So uh, a guy that's going to be consistent two and a half to three years, man, I, that's 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 number two. After that, man, just filling the gaps. Filling the gaps. Coaching, get you, get you all that, everything around it. You know what I mean? Um, just filling the gaps after that. Forgive me if I'm wrong here, but off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure you were the last guy to start four years at, at Georgia Tech, right? Oh, man, hey, we'll, we'll have our time and place to go down the resume. 
Hey, fair enough, fair enough. Hey, man, I I'm, I'm, I'm a modest guy, man. I'm very modest, especially to a lot of people on Twitter, man. I don't I don't pull up the stats. I don't pull up the resume, man, um, especially when we start talking about, you know, uh, our tech history. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that one day, man. This ain't the day for that, though. Well, fair enough. Ra- fair enough. To wrap up, let me ask. Let me just ask you this: Like, if you're if you got to talk to the team right now, what's let's say the fan base and the team? What's what 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 would you say is the thing we should be holding in first and foremost in mind as we're? I mean, we didn't we didn't make a bowl game, so I don't have to worry about that. But first and foremost, going into twenty twenty three, recruiting, spring game, all that kind of stuff. Man, one day at a time, and I know this might be a dare to be different speech, but it's just that simple. Um, we've seen, you know. And week f- from week five moving forward, what one day at a time will do in just a matter of weeks. Now, if we could put some days together like that, some weeks, weeks together like that, some months together like that, a spring training session like that, a summer camp like that, you know what I mean? A preseason, you know what I mean? Two weeks, uh, a preseason OTA camp, if you will, like that. Yeah. We put all that shit together, you know what I mean? Start building that day by day. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in good shape. You know what I mean? The leadership is in place, I believe. Um I don't think we lack for talent. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Again, that back position is a very um, detrimental position. But you know, uh, what's his name? Zach. That's his first name, right? Gibson. Yeah, Zach yep. Gibson. Uh, Zach, Z- Zach, Zach Pyron is uh, the red. Or Pyron. There's both. Yeah, there's two of them. <laughs> yeah. Tyson has shown some fire. You know what I'm saying? Um, honestly, the two quarterback system has not hurt us. You it know what not. I mean? It has not. Again, one day at a time. Yeah, we got a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? And, and again, we're switching regimen, uh, um, uh, regimes. You know what I mean? So one day at a time, having fun, believing, and man, stay positive. Stay positive. Yeah. Damn, stay positive. We we have a very at times we can have a very toxic fan base, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we need to be more realistic of what our expectations one and two. Just be positive. Shit, if we're going to root for tech, you're going to have tech on your screen name. You're going to have tech on your car. You're going to have that hard tech fan in your family that you support and you love. Man, just be positive. If not, shut the hell up. Yeah. But again, one day at a time. The only thing we can do right now. Take care of the little things. I love it. Jake, you got the last word. Oh, man. I, uh, I, I'm excited. That's all I got to say. It sound, Reggie, it sounds like you're excited, too, and I, I think I speak for, for oh, Jack yeah. as well. So that's good to hear. Hell yeah, man. This, this is our bowl season. <laughs> Rick, keep me out. For sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's all we got. I don't want to keep you too long, so thanks a ton for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, this will be it – we'll help. Maybe we'll talk again at some point. It would be awesome. But uh, glad to know that, hey, you're, you're buying into this. And so that if you're buying into it, we're buying into it. So there you go. Hey, we got to. Got to. Got to, man. Uh, anytime, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah. All right. You're, for sure. Have a good one, Reggie. Coming out of the Reggie Ball interview, just want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday or Monday night. I guess when we record. We'll be back on Monday or Tuesday when it gets uploaded to the podcast feed uh, with our normal uh, weekend upload. Um, if you have any questions or can or want to talk talk to us or send, uh, let us know what you all want us to cover, uh, you can reach us at fromtherumbleseat at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We are on Instagram. The Instagram I just started, so that is still fresh and fresh. So please give that a follow at From the Rumble Seat is what that is on Instagram. Um, and then we post all of our articles on Facebook as well. Uh, there's a mailbag every week and so much more. Uh, Jake Grant is at, at Jake Grant 93 I want to say, on Twitter. He usually does this part at the end. Uh, and I am at Jack Nicholas on Twitter. And then you can find us at, at FTRS Blog on Twitter as well. Thanks a ton for listening. We are in the new era of Georgia Tech football, aren't we? And we're glad we got to be here to... Talk about it. Talk about it with the tech legend. So going forward. Anyways, have a good night, y'all. Good jackets.